no. Umbilical cords are typically thrown away right. after the pregnancy is finished. Uh, placentas, by the way, you can also do the same thing. Really? Yeah, that's another yeah. source of them. And then the final and perhaps most important category are the adult stem cells. Umbilical cords are actually a, a form of adult stem cells, but normally when you think of adult stem cells, you think of the stem cells that you get out of my body or out right. of yours. Mm -hmm. So like bone marrow stem cells mm -hmm. that you get from your hip bone area. Those are very powerful stem cells that have been used to treat all kinds of diseases and uh, are really for decades these have been used. So we're talking on the order of thousands of patients who have already been treated using these adult stem cells. So when you look at those four categories that we just listed, three out of four of them, the Roman Catholic Church would vigorously encourage and support research with. So this general insight or well this false insight that gets propagated so widely that the church is opposed to stem cell research is simply inaccurate. It's not true. It's not so true. then why is there so much focus on that first type that you described that is not morally acceptable and if there's three other types that we can gain that are morally acceptable why is there so much attention being brought on the one that's not acceptable and not the to me I would say well look there's three other types that are okay why aren't we going after that? I think it's an excellent question and it's a, it's a little bit hard to pin down exactly. Part of it I think is that there is a general thrust in the direction of the culture of death and so anything that promotes that culture of death tends to gain ascendancy with the mass media, it gets attention in the mass media. Uh, and there's another kind of more pedestrian consideration which is the money issue. When you isolate stem cells from, a, from an embryo, mm -hmm. you prepare what's called a line. And that line basically grows forever in the laboratory, as long as you take care of the cells. But when you do that, as a researcher, you can get a license on that line. And then anybody else who you send those cells to, to do experiments with or to study them, has to pay you royalties. And there's actually quite a bit of money to be made in that direction. Meanwhile, if you look at the adult stem cells or the umbilical cord stem cells, I mean, if you take my adult stem cells out of me, put them back into me to treat me, that's not necessarily a money-making proposal to the same extent as the ones from embryos. So that's another factor that is at play. So in other words, those who stand to benefit economically from this embryonic stem cell research are going to keep making money no matter what the results of the experiments are. That's exactly right. So, so the argument, that, and, and I wanted to get into this as, as a next logical question, the, 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 the fact that with the embryonic stem cell research we do not see medical benefits, and I'd like you to expound on that, versus with the adult stem cell we are seeing medical benefits, becomes irrelevant precisely because, well, I really don't care if, if I'm going to become a millionaire by, 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 by uh, having these stem cell lines, what do I care ultimately if it has medical benefit? I, I, I'm going to benefit from just the experiments. Yes, I mean, I think that, that that's the danger of allowing these kinds of commercial pressures mm. to take over and drive the enterprise. It happened, as you know, very early in in vitro fertilization. The same sorts of commercial concerns took over. It became a multi-million dollar industry very quickly and it was no longer seriously discussed in terms of the very grave ethical issues mm -hmm. that arise. Mm -hmm. And I think we're on the cusp of the same sort of thing happening with stem cell research that as it becomes more and more lucrative to go in certain directions, it will become more and more difficult for people to carry out an ordered discourse around these topics. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, I mean, to, to return to what you mentioned earlier about the difference in terms of clinical results between adult and embryonic, that difference is a really striking one in the sense that embryonic stem cell research thus far has yielded precisely zero cures or treatments in human patients. Not a soul has ever been treated or cured of any ailment using these cells. 
Uh, and this fact, I think, gets kind of obscured as one hypes and promotes and oversells mm -hmm. and overbills. And like over Janet was saying about the Hollywood stars. And exactly. The, the, the Michael J. Fox. And, yeah, and even some of the politicians saying, if I am elected, you will see people rising up out of their wheelchairs. I mean, this is yeah. mythology. Right. Absolutely. It's mythology. It is just a bill of goods that is being sold hook, line, and sinker. And part of the problem is that when people realize that these embryos come, that these stem cells come from early embryos, they say to themselves, well, these are obviously powerful cells because they're flexible. They can become, they can go in this direction, become liver, go in that direction, become kidney, go the other direction, become muscle. So they're powerful cells. So, you know, maybe we can push off Parkinson's, maybe we can push off Alzheimer's, maybe we can push off diabetes, maybe we don't have to die at all. Mm -hmm. And there's this kind of mythology, as you say, that arises around it where people come to believe that, well, this is something so big that we should be throwing huge amounts of money at it even though we have no clinical returns at all. And this is what happened, as you're probably aware, in California with the passage of Proposition 71. In that state, they dedicated $3 billion over the next 10 years to promoting the destruction of embryos and therapeutic cloning uh, in an attempt to get after these cures that putatively exist somewhere mm. in the future. Mm. So it's a purely speculative project, and even though California is bankrupt, because of these bigger mythological elements, mm -hmm. I think they were able to convince the voters that this is something that they should spend their money on. It's amazing. Yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah, I know there was also confusion when President Bush uh, you know, came out against embryonic stem cell, and then there was a talk about, well, there's existing lines and that's going to stay, but he said no more after that. So that's what you're talking about, is whatever scientists hold the right to those lines will continue to um, be used for research then. That's correct. Those lines that existed, you see, President Bush gave his speech on August 9th, 2001, and basically what he said was any stem cell lines that exist as of 9 p.m. tonight will be eligible for federal dollars to study those lines. So there's federal money out there that you can use to study those lines. Right. And wasn't but that because those embryos were already destroyed? That was the reasoning, that yes. Was the rationale. That he said, well, we can't resurrect those embryos. We can't bring them back to life. Right. So let's get some good out of their mortal remains. Right. Uh, and in that sense, he tried to draw the line in the sand and say that this is where we're going to stop federal funding. Any embryos that get made after tonight you can't get federal dollars right. in order to study them. So uh, this, this division uh, doesn't mean that there is any legal preventing of people from destroying embryos. If you have your own dollars, you can still destroy human embryos. Right. President Bush didn't, wasn't able to stop that general destruction from taking place, but he was able to regulate how federal dollars could be spent so that's what his decision largely dealt with. So then that means couples who have frozen embryos, you know, in, in these banks waiting, and they, they talk now about, oh, they're, they're just not going to be wait, used. Those are the embryos now that private people want to be able to go after, right? That's right. The leftover spare frozen embryos, as they're sometimes called. I mean, spare is an awful name for right. them. Uh, but that, those are the embryos that are currently being used being sacrificed, in effect, to extract embryonic stem cells by private researchers. Mm -hmm. And so if they have their own money, I mean, for example, uh, Doug Melton's laboratory at Harvard has received private money, and he has generated at least a dozen new human stem cell lines from in vitro fertilized embryos. And in other words, couples signed a consent form that said they would turn these embryos over to the lab for research purposes. Of course, such consent is not valid right. because you can never sign the dotted line to turn your own child over to researchers for experimentation. That's always invalid. Yeah. We're going to continue on our next segment uh, with this discussion and also begin to explore the connection between the stem cell research and cloning. So, Father, I want to thank you for being with us, and uh, we look forward to welcoming you again. Thanks for all the work you're doing. Well, thank you so much, Father. All right. Thank you, Janet. Thank Brothers you, Brothers and sisters, stay with us.